I'm Evangelist Gabriel Fernandez and God has called and commissioned me to preach the good news of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friend, I encourage you as I share a message with you and I pray for you today. Be in agreement, connect in faith, believe and you shall receive in the name of Jesus. Welcome, my dear friend, to this special broadcast brought to you by GFM United Prayer and Revival Ministry Studios, the studio that aims to take you to the house of the living God. We want to go to the house of the living God because that is where we belong, in His presence, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 4 weeks a month, 12 months a year, 365 days a year, all the years of our life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is so good. And I am filled with the joy of the Lord even this morning as I share this word with you. And I trust, I know, I believe God is going to bless you. Now, today I want to speak about the Holy Spirit. Let's discuss. Let's speak about what the Bible says. I'm not going to go into everything it says. But in this broadcast, I'll talk about the main things and the key things that we need to understand about the Holy Spirit. If it's your first time on this channel, I encourage you to subscribe because there will be many more videos like this that will bless you and take you closer to God and help you to walk in the fullness of your calling, of your purpose, of your destiny, of that divine mandate and task that God has entrusted to you. Now, let us begin by welcoming the Holy Spirit, the very Holy Spirit who we are going to talk about today. Lift up your hands and just say this out loud. Say, Holy Spirit of God, I welcome you. Come and touch me, come and bless me, come and fill me afresh today, and show me Jesus. I ask this in Jesus' name, Amen. Now, my dear friend, I want to talk about the first aspect of the Holy Spirit. You know, many people have this idea that the Holy Spirit comes and He's with you for the time when you're praying and then He leaves you. But that's very far from the truth. The Bible actually shows us that our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit comes in you and He stays with you. And we see this in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. It hints at this. It says, Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit within you? There are so many keys in just that sentence that I've read to you. Or do you not know so don't you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you? So your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit and He is within you. Now let's go on and read the rest of what that verse has to say. Whom you have from God, you are not your own. It goes on and says you are bought at a price. Hallelujah. This is so powerful. So another aspect that we see from this verse that I've read to you is that the Holy Spirit that we receive is given to us from God. Now, another aspect that we need to discuss that's so important that many people miss is that the Holy Spirit brings the power. Many people are praying for the anointing, for the power of God in their life to increase. They're praying to experience the power of God in that area that they're called to be in. But notice what it says in the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8. It says, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Now let's read that once again. But you will receive power. And that is dunamis power. That's divine enablement. That is divine enablement to get the task that God has called you to do done and you will receive this power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you so he is within you he is with you and he's upon you that is the final part of receiving the Holy Spirit when he comes upon you when you receive your calling from God and the Holy Spirit comes upon you he sort of blankets you and you have this divine ability and this divine strength that is supernatural to do things that you never thought would be possible in your lifetime. And this is what the power of God does. Also, apart from that, that same power moves and allows us to walk in miracles, signs and wonders. 
It allows us to experience the supernatural. It allows us to experience signs and wonders following us wherever we go. Miracles, signs, and wonders shall follow them that believe. And that is scripture. Now, let's go on. How do we receive the Holy Spirit? Now, this one is one that we need to talk about a bit because I've talked about many of the other points in previous videos. And I'm sure you can find them if you just search in my videos concerning the Holy Spirit. If you search in the broadcast, you should find other videos where I talk about the Holy Spirit. But this aspect that I'm going to share with you over here is so important. How do you receive the Holy Spirit? Many people ask this question. The scriptures are there, the scriptures are plain, but there is one scripture that shows us exactly what we can do and we will receive the Holy Spirit. And it comes from the book of Acts chapter 2 from verse 38. And it says, And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So notice now, there are many things that we need to take note of. The first one is repent and be baptized, every one of you. It is so important that we turn away from those things which we know are wrong. Why receive the Holy Spirit if we're not going to listen to Him? And the situation where we don't listen to Him is when we don't repent. He convicts us and guides us and leads us in the way that we must go. But if we don't repent and turn away, repenting doesn't just mean saying, sorry, Lord, I made this mistake, but it means turning away from the thing which you did and you know is wrong and changing your lifestyle, not to do that anymore. And it's also by the power of the Holy Spirit that we are able to do this. So that's a facet that we've discussed before. But how do you receive the Holy Spirit? Repent and be baptized, every one of you. Now, this part is important in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So we repent and we be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. That's the first point I want to show you. That's the, that's the first point I want to share with you. And the second point I want to share with you is that the Holy Spirit is a gift to us. And a gift is not earned. A gift is not like an income. An income is something you work for, then you receive it. But a gift is something that you don't deserve, but it's given to you freely. That's what makes it a gift. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, let's talk about other things the Holy Spirit does apart from just give us power. The first scripture I want to read to you is from the book of Isaiah chapter 11 from verse 2. It says, And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. So this hints as to what the Holy Spirit will show us and lead us and guide us into and show us concerning this lifetime and what he will give us so that we can be able to walk this walk and we can be successful in it. So it starts by saying, And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding. So that's the first thing that we receive, and the Holy Spirit enables us to have when we receive the Holy Spirit. Wisdom and understanding. And this is not just any wisdom and understanding. This is not just any Sophia and Phrenesis. This is wisdom and understanding from God. It is divine. It is a spiritual type of wisdom, a spiritual type of understanding. So we are able to comprehend and understand spiritual things and also fleshly things. Now it goes on and says, the spirit of counsel and might. So he is also our counselor. He is also our comforter. And we'll see this even as we go on. He is our counselor, our comforter, our teacher, and it says also, and might. Might meaning he's got power, he's powerful. The Holy Spirit is more powerful than the strongest demon you can find in hell. He's the most powerful spirit in this whole universe. 
the Holy Spirit of God, because He is God. Three in one, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the triune being. He is part of the Trinity. He is powerful, and He is the Spirit of counsel and might. Now, another aspect we see in the scripture is He is the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. So, apart from wisdom and understanding, there's also knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And this is one thing that the Holy Spirit will bring when He comes in us. When He, when we receive the Holy Spirit, He will bring us knowledge. And not just any knowledge, but the godly knowledge. And you'll see, even as we read on in the scriptures that I'm going to share with you, that He reveals the scriptures to us. He shows us the way that we must go. And it goes on and says, And the fear of the Lord. You know, in this time and this age, many people are lacking the fear of the Lord. We need the fear of the Lord in our lives if we are to succeed. We need the fear of the Lord in our lives if we are to walk this walk. And we need to respect and honor who God is. But also, this fear of the Lord refers to a relationship with God. And you can't have that fear of the Lord unless you know who God is. And when you develop that relationship with God, through the power of the Holy Spirit helping you, you will be able to get to know God, get to know who He is, and just how amazing He is. And that brings the fear of the Lord in our lives. The next scripture that I want to read to you is from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, from verse 26. It says, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Now, I want to read this once again. Let's break it down and let's just dissect what it is saying. It says, But the Helper. So once again over there, it reveals that the Holy Spirit is our helper. He helps us to walk this walk and to live this Christian life. Without the Holy Spirit, we can't do it. The Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name. So the Holy Spirit is sent from the Father in the name of Jesus. He will teach you all things. So once again over there, we see it shows that He will give us knowledge, wisdom and understanding. He will teach us all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you and remember the gospel of John chapter 1 refers to Jesus as the word the word become flesh and manifest among us it says over here and bring to your remembrance everything I have said to you so if you are deep with spiritual insight you'll understand and know that what Jesus said is the word of God and he'll bring to remembrance all the word of God that has been shared with you. Hallelujah. And I'm putting it in its simplest terms. I'm trying not to go so deep where not everyone will understand it. But I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible so that everyone can understand it and understand it easily. Now let's go on to the next scripture. From the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 26. It says, Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know what to pray for as we ought. But the Spirit Himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. Now, notice over here it says, Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. So once again, it emphasizes that we need the Holy Spirit. He helps us in our weakness. Elsewhere in the Bible it says, By the Spirit we put to death the misdeeds of the body. So by that same Holy Spirit that we receive, He helps us to put to death the misdeeds of the body. He makes us strong. He helps us to walk this walk and to be genuine for Jesus Christ. Furthermore, we receive the fruits of the Holy Spirit when we have the Holy Spirit. And this is just an offspring of us having the Holy Spirit and us being obedient to Him. They will naturally just come about. It goes on and says, For we do not know what to pray as we ought. Now, this is an aspect that many people struggle with. Prayer. Sometimes you don't know what to pray. You don't know what to say. You don't know what is the most key and pressing issue that you must pray about. In your natural eyes, it might seem as though you need to pray about one thing. Meanwhile, in the spiritual, God is trying to warn you 
that that one thing you're praying about is not the actual thing you need to be praying about. There's something else that you don't see. And the Holy Spirit will reveal these things to you. Apart from that, it says, But the Spirit Himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. So there's another level of prayer where it is not even words that come out, but it is a type of groaning that comes from the Holy Spirit. The last but not the least scripture I want to share with you is from the Gospel of Luke chapter 24 from verse 45. It says, Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And one thing I want to share with you, my dear friend, is it is God who opens our minds to understand the scriptures. And he does this through his Holy Spirit. We can't understand the, the word of God in the way that God wants us to understand it and receive revelation if we do not have the Holy Spirit. So I'll read that to you once again. The Gospel of Luke chapter 24 from verse 45. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. I'll read it once again. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. This is why you can get many people who know the Bible back to front. They know the words that are in there, but they don't know what it is saying. They've read the Bible their whole life, but they don't know what it is saying. Why? Because it's revealed to us by God through the Holy Spirit. This is why it's so important for us to have the Holy Spirit of God. And this is why I release videos like this, so it can bless you and take you to a greater glory. Now, I want to pray for you today if you have not yet received the Holy Spirit. Today you will. As we pray, I trust, know and believe you will be baptized in the Holy Spirit and in fire even as we pray and God will touch you in such a way that you've never experienced before. So in saying that, let us begin to pray. Wherever you are, we're going to begin by praising God. So wherever you are, just begin to thank God and praise Him. And as we become aware of His presence, then we'll begin to pray. And I'll pray for you and miracles, signs and wonders will happen. So in saying that, let us begin. Father, we just thank you. Thank you for another day. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your precious Holy Spirit. We absolutely love and adore your Holy Spirit. We love him and we appreciate him. And we want him in our lives. We want you, Father. We want you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for another day to live to the fullest. We thank you. For another opportunity to live and achieve great things in this life. We thank you, Lord, for the person of the Holy Spirit. For he is a person. He's got a personality. And he comes and he shows us the way that we must walk in. Thank you for the Holy Spirit through whom we receive power to put to death the misdeeds of the body. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. When he comes upon us, we receive power to accomplish that divine mission and mandate that you've given us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the full and finished work of the cross. Thank you for Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who gave his life without reservation through love. He gave his life without reservation and he did it because of the extent of his love that he has for us. We give you praise and we thank you for your grace and your abundant mercy that is released to us through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen and Amen. Hallelujah. My dear friends, I discern God's presence and I know, I trust, I believe wherever you're watching, God is going to bless you even as we go into a time of prayer. Now, as we begin, I want to encourage you comment down below in the comment section and agree with me. There is so much power and agreement and even as you comment and agree, God is going to bless you. But in saying that, let us begin to pray. Father, I pray for my dear friend. Right now, as my dear friend repents, my dear friend, wherever you have done anything wrong and the Lord has placed it on your heart or you feel convicted concerning that thing and you feel that it's not right and needs to change, right now just repent. Father, as my dear friend repents and turns away from those ways which are wrong, in the name of Jesus Christ, and wants to be baptized in the Holy Spirit and in fire. Baptize, my dear friend, in the Holy Spirit and in fire. Let my dear friend receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit, the indwelling Holy Spirit in their body, which is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And 
Let them receive a touch from you even today. My dear friend, dear son, my dear friend, dear daughter, wherever my dear friend is watching, bless, touch, and take my dear friend to a greater level, a greater glory, and a greater altitude. I give you praise, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Let signs, wonders, and miracles follow my dear friend wherever my dear friend goes. Father, we haven't even gone in depth in this topic, but I've tried to keep it as simple as possible so that everyone of different levels of understanding will be blessed by it. And I thank you. I thank you that people are going to be blessed today because we have not come here for anything else apart from the glory of King Jesus. And we give you praise. If my dear friend is trusting you for a miracle, do a miracle, do a sign, do a wonder in my dear friend's life. If my dear friend is trusting you for signs, wonders, and miracles, do what only you can do and do it mightily in my dear friend's life. I ask this in Jesus' name and I thank you for it, Lord. Amen. My dear friend, wherever you are, may God bless you. May God keep you. May God turn his face towards you and be gracious to you. May God turn his face towards you and give you peace in the name of Jesus Christ. In saying that, we come to the end of this video, but I'll be back again soon with another video that will bless you. Until then, from myself, Evangelist Gabriel Fernandez and the GFM United Prayer and Revival Ministry Studio team, God bless you and goodbye. In saying that, my dear friend, we come to the end of this video. If you are blessed by this video and you feel led to donate or to partner with us to support us in this work that we are doing, then you can do so through PayPal or Patreon. All the links are provided in the description. Until next time, God bless you and goodbye.